Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video sponsored by Simon's Stamp. Today we are going to be using the Little Mermaids set from the Greeting Farm. Now I'm going to be honest, I bought these like a year ago. They're totally adorable, I love them, but I never really got a chance to use them. So before we go any further with the card, let me just say this video is long and I had to cut a lot out and it's still long. In real life, this video or this card took me about an hour and a half. So if you want to watch this video, dude, kudos to you for hanging out with me. If this is not the video for you, totally okay. Like move on with the rest of your life. Um, it's fine. So anyway, stamped out my Little Mermaids. I drew with a pencil in the background, um, just some little rocks and some little hills. I'm going to go ahead and mask everything that I have stamped um, because I wasn't sure where I was going to put these little seaweeds and how I was going to do my background yet. So the little, I'm just using, this is a piece of, um, it's either Eclipse masking paper or post-it note, um, just to roughly mask out the areas where the rocks are, um, just because I didn't want the seaweed in front of it every time. So now that I have everything kind of stamped out, um, I got my fish in the background, I am just using a Copic Safe writing pen to outline the things that I hand drew in, like those rocks. I'm not going to outline the sand dunes in the back because those are really just a guide for me uh, with my Zig clean color markers. So I have removed all of the masks. Just want to put that out there because they are paper. If you get them wet, you will ruin them. Um, I removed all the masks. I am being so lazy. So lazy, folks. Um, I do have, if you wanted it to be perfection, you can use like liquid miscuit uh, and then you would paint it over the objects that you didn't want to get any um, of the watercolor on. I was not going to paint all of these objects, like all of these mermaids and all of these fish, and I just wasn't doing it. So I just figured, you know what, I'm going to scribble down my color and I'll just be super careful. I'll do it with a small brush because I'm not painting all of these things. Um, but if you have the time and the patience to do it, that is totally an option and you do you, whatever makes you happy. So I'm working in kind of like a triangle pattern here. I wanted my lightest area to be in the center, kind of like there was a stream of sunlight coming down through the water. And I'm using a number two uh, round brush from the Silver Brush Company. Um, I really do like these brushes uh, and, and then I don't have to hear any more comments about my rounded brush that I left in my brush over or in my water overnight. Um, but anyway, so I'm kind of just working in the smaller areas. So I did take the water all the way across the quote unquote sand dunes in the background, but then I'm really just kind of working in these smaller areas. Um, and so I can outline my images because I don't want to get the watercolor on top of my images. I'll be honest, this was messy. Um, there was some color that got on to the mermaids or got onto the fish, but to be quite honest, I still didn't care. I still didn't care because I still didn't have to paint all of those things with the liquid miscuit. So once I have them kind of like outlined, um, then I just kind of fill in the area with a little bit of water. Uh, I tried to make sure that those areas stayed wet so that they would flow into the rest of the background as I got that done. You'll see I'm going down back down to that bottom mermaid making sure that area stays wet because I do want them to flow together. I do want it to be a fluid background. Um, I just, again, didn't want to paint all that stuff. So once I have kind of all of my water connected and I've gone around all my little teeny tiny images, I'm going to get a much bigger brush. Um, I think I ended up using the three quarter inch brush from Ranger. And then that way I can fill in those big areas without any fear that I'm going to get water on the fish or the mermaids uh, because I've already outlined them with water. So I know that the water will stop wherever I've put that barrier. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that down. Um, with Zig Clean Color Markers, they are super intense color. That is one of the reasons why I love them. Uh, but you could do this with um, Distress Ink if you did like a little, I do that a lot. I'll do like a palette on my Ranger Craft Mat and um, then you could, you know, paint them in around. This just seemed like an easier way, even though I had to keep going, um, keep using the smaller brush to kind of go around my areas. This also um, 
typically I will do my background twice when I'm using Zig Clean color markers. Uh, I just feel like I get a better result that way. Um, with this one, I'm only going to show you me doing the background once because like I said, this video is brutally long. Um, even with everything that I cut out, you can see it's still at like a 20 minute mark. There's just a lot of coloring. There's just a lot of stuff. But, and I guess I normally I wouldn't necessarily do a card like this on a video, um, but I just, I don't know, if I if I do a card without a video nowadays, I feel like I'm jipping people. And, th and that's probably not true, but that's how I feel. So I always do a video. Um, so my feelings are not hurt if you cannot watch this entire thing. I get it. You have lives. So I sprinkled on some water and then I'm just kind of blotting that up with a paper towel. This is going to give me kind of like those little light specks that you see in the water. And then I'm going to go ahead and move on to the bottom. Now I'm we do have the 36 cent you saw me show you in the beginning. I have the 36 set of the um, Zig Clean Color Markers, uh, but I have also purchased some separate that were not included in that set that I wanted, and I never know which came with which. So you'll see in the, um, if you're watching on YouTube in the description box below, if you're on the blog, I also, I, I linked to the 36, because that is what I originally bought. Um, but then I also link to each individual marker that I used so you will know what colors I actually put down on the paper. So this is like a, a beige and a, um, I think it's called a gray brown. And I only put the darker color more toward the back so that that would kind of fall into um, the background. And then because it's just the way that I roll, um, I do all of my detail work with my Copics. So when I'm doing any sort of watercoloring Typically, I'm just doing it to get color into my background, and then I will go in and, and add what I want to add. So this is the completed cut down draw dry piece, and we're going to go into the Copa coloring. Colored all of the mermaids exactly the same with this color combination. I'm only going to show you coloring one skin tone. Um, I know their hair lies different. I know that um, they're in different positions, but typically what you're going to see when you're doing any sort of shading is the um, shadows will be darker around their face where their hair is falling over their forehead. Uh, I color everything as if my light source was in the top right usually, but because I have the light, that stream of light in the um, center, I'm trying to kind of pay attention to that, but it's not perfect and it's okay. There's so much going on in this particular scene for this particular card. Um, I don't think anybody's going to notice if my shading is slightly off. So I work out from my lightest color out to my darkest. I did stamp this in Simon Says Stamp Black ink. And I was thinking, like, I needed to, for the watercoloring, I needed to be archival, I needed to be waterproof, so that's why I used that one. But the Intense Black ink is also waterproof, so I could have used that and saved myself a little bit of trouble um, with a little bit of bleeding that I had when I put my Copics on top, so keep that in mind. For the hair, um, I decided I was going to show you this one because it was the only one that was really different. I wanted this particular mermaid to have black hair, and with black hair... It's not really just black. So whether it has a purple undertone, a red undertone, a blue undertone, it's usually something at the base. It's not typically just black, exactly like when you're mixing paint for a project. Um, a lot of artists will not just buy black tube paint. They will mix their own black because they want it to be on the cooler side or on the warmer side. Um, so I decided because I had the C scene going, it made the most sense for her to, to have a blue undertone. So that's how I'm coloring it. I'm doing it um, exactly like I would color any other hair. So I'm using small flicking motions, um, trying to go with the shape of her hair, the way that it is parted or positioned, how um, the wave comes in. It would be darker where it gathered. It would be darker behind her neck. Um, this piece particular here is up front, so that's going to be lighter. Anything behind that will be darker. Same thing over here. She has a piece that kind of curls up and over, so there would be a highlight on that piece. What's behind it would be darker. And then I'm just going to move out with my C's. So I, this is just me again, you could use warm grays, toner grays, neutral grays. I just prefer the cool grays and especially since I was using blue as my base I wanted it to be a cool gray. 
So still just working out to my darkest color using those small flicking motions. Want to make sure that I keep that highlight, especially with black hair. Um, black hair is super like shiny and I'm so jealous. Like my sister has dark hair and she literally just has to like wash it and go in the sun and then it just looks amazing. And mine does not. Mine looks like I put my finger in an electric socket, but I digress. Um, so you really want to keep those areas and the larger your white areas are, the more shine that your hair is going to appear to have. Um, I don't tend to leave a ton of white when I do black hair, uh, but that's totally an option if you like the look of that. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way. I did leave some white um, so that it would have some appearance of shine. And then I also, once I was done with the grays, I went back in with that blue because you can see that we've eaten up pretty much all of that blue and I'll stripe some of it through my white areas um, and also through the, the grays because Copic are transparent. They'll lay on top of each other and lift each other. So that was her hair. I did all of the hair the same way with those short flicking motions. I'm only going to show you the color combinations that I use in case you happen to see one and you're like, oh man, I really love that, but she didn't show it. I didn't show it, but I will show you the colors and then you can just use the same technique that for the one that I showed you. Once the girls were all colored up, I'm going to move on to their tops and their tails. Um, I wanted them to be all different colors. I wanted it to be fun. So for her flower, I decided that I was going to make them like whatever color they, whatever color I picked, they, their whole outfit was just going to be that color. Um, it's already kind of just crazy with everything that's going on. So I wanted them to um, be a little bit more simple as far as the coloring. So this little girl is gonna be pink. Her tail is tucked up underneath her um, little tiny booty. So she would cast a shadow under her tail. And then where her arm is laying, um, there will also be a shadow. And the same thing where her she's actually seated there would be a little bit of a shadow, but because I didn't want it to blend in completely to the tail, I left a little bit of a gap. So these are really tiny areas. I used mostly three color combinations. Um, you probably don't even need to do that. You could probably get away with two. And again, I'm just going to show you one or two of these little outfits and then go ahead and, and move on to the next thing. For this mermaid, I decided I was going to make her yellow, but you can see the tip of her tail on the right-hand side got some watercolor on it, so it looks green. I ain't going to fight it. Mm -mm. No, no reason to, because the green is pretty. I, I'll embrace some green. So after I did the shading with the yellows, um which I thought were, you know, super pretty, but that just that little bit of the green on the tail, um, I brought in a YG03. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that to the tip of the tail. I'm going to kind of flick it into the yellow and then just add a little stripe underneath her top and bam, girlfriend got a new outfit and it doesn't look wonky or weird or that one little tip of her tail is has color on it that shouldn't be there. Because you know me and especially at this juncture, we're not starting over. No way. I'm like 45 minutes in guys. Yeah, I'm not starting over. So I did the little girl on the top in orange, and then these are the colors I picked to do the fish in the background. I wanted the fish to be brightly colored. I figured that this would be where I did the majority of my mixing, not so much on the girls themselves, though if this card was simpler, that would be beautiful. You know, make them multiple colors or their tails multiple colors, that'd be fantastic. Um, but because I'm just, it's so busy, so, so, so busy, um, I opted not to do that. I opted to just add kind of multiple colors to my fish. These are all colors that I had already previously used in the card um, at some point or another. And there's no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it. I'm just picking colors and trying to make them um, pick the ones that worked together. And then I just did that for both kinds of fish, the ones that are facing to the left and the ones that are facing to the right. For the sand, I used the same E50s that I used for the mermaid in the top left, her hair. You'll see on some of my rocks, um, I did do some brown on them that was intentional um, just to kind of break them up from the rocks that's seated in the background. I am bringing the darkest color up from the back um, because I want that to look like it's further away. And if it's further away, typically it is a little bit darker. 
um, adding some little shadows underneath those elements to kind of ground them. And then just kind of leaving just a little bit of a light area um, in, in the like the front right hand to, to give that a little bit of segregation. The other thing that I'm going to do, and if you haven't seen my videos from previous summers, um, you'll see it a ton this summer as well, is when I do sand, I like to do stippling, which is just a series of little dots, gives it a little bit of texture, and it breaks up um, the long areas of sand. So in this particular card, there isn't a ton, uh, but there's a lot of other cards where I've done where you just have this huge stretch of sand, and it's all kind of one color and even like the shading that you can achieve doesn't really break it up. So this is, that texture is a good way to do it. For the sand castle, I'm using the same colors I used in the sand. The portion in the middle of the castle that is set back would be darker. So I am shading it as such. Uh, also the little doorways, I'm adding shading to just one side or the other to give them a little bit of depth. So they look like they're actual holes versus just, um, you know, little circle well, it's not really a circle, little rounded mounds that are cut out of it. Then I'm going to do these rocks in the same grays. Um, rocks come in all kinds of colors. There isn't a right or a wrong way to do it, but I felt like gray was just a really good neutral, um, again, playing for, you know, that busyness. And for me, um, you know, some people are looking at this and they're like, it's a one layer card, Kelly. It is not that busy. You don't have a ton of layers. You don't have a ton of this. But for me, this card is like, whoo, crazy. This, this card's working a 60 hour work week. I mean, there's so much going on here. And I think that it's pretty. And I wanted to take my time with this set because I have owned it for a year and I haven't used it. And I bought it because I loved it. It's not like I bought it because I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll get around to using this one day. I mean, who of us who buys stamps thinks that way? No, you buy it because you love it and you want to use it. So to get the texture on the rocks, I am just doing, again, little um, the flicking motions, but I'm creating kind of like straight lines. And I'm adding the shadows where they would go underneath her little tail behind the rocks that are sitting in front of it. Um, but I am doing a lot to try to make sure I can serve a highlight so that there is some texture on these rocks. They wouldn't be completely smooth in nature. I don't want them to be completely smooth on my card. For the seaweed, I decided I was going to use two different um, kind of green families. I used blue greens and yellow greens because I just like me some yellow green, especially with a navy or a purple background. I'm like, ooh, yellow green be so pretty. Um, so I just kind of blocked out the yellow green ones. And then from there, I colored them both the same way, but I wanted you to, um, I guess, see the different in, difference in the color schemes. So basically I just picked a side of the seaweed that I wanted to be darker. And then I just added shadows to that side. If it was behind an object, I did add some uh, darker color to the base of it, which these are almost all behind a color or behind an object, behind a color, what? Um, anyway, so then I just blended them out. And again, using just those simple kind of three color blends, uh, a light, a medium and a dark. For the BGs, I did the same thing, but because I wanted some of them to look like they were further back um, than others, I did use my mid-tone to completely fill in some of them so that just that it would give the appearance of pushing that back. Another way to achieve that is not to make them darker with your Copic colors, but to give them like a coat of gray um, not super dark, but dark enough that it just, it makes it a teeny tiny bit darker. And in doing that, it will push it back, um, into your background. So everything doesn't look like it's just laying on top of this card. That's not what we're trying to achieve here. So once those were all blended out with the lightest color, hallelujah, we're done with the Copic coloring. And when we're done with the Copic coloring, we do white gel pen detail if you've ever watched my videos. So I added some to the sand. I added some polka dots to her flower. I added some polka dots to the fish um, just for those little details. And then uh, again, it's the status quo. I like a big, bold out, a black outline. So I went ahead and outlined everything. I mean everything. I outlined all of it. Oh my God, all of it. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment. So I'm using Simon's Stamp Black Ink to stamp my sentiment. I, and I prearranged this so I knew exactly where it was going to go. And I'm going to cut it off because my big blonde ponytail was all you could see of me stamping that sentiment. 
just I was so nervous about making sure it was lined upright. So I'm going to add on some clear droplets with um, some glossy accents. I like glossy accents because it dries clear so you can see straight through those little droplets. And then I put shimmer on basically everything. All of the fish, the mermaid's little outfits, their tails, the whole thing. And then we are finally done with this card. So if you hung in until here, God bless you. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope that you learned something and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.